Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. Last week, I reviewed Spider-Man, the 2003 movie, and found it to be an interesting take on the character. But who is Spider-Man? Where did he come from? And where is he going? Well, over the next couple of shorties, I'll be presenting you with a brief history of Spider-Man. But let's begin at the beginning. The story of Spider-Man begins with the timely Atlas comic book, Amazing Adventures. Amazing Adventures introduced the world to Dr. Druid, who at the time was known as Dr. Droom. Being so similarly named, it wouldn't have been that difficult for people to confuse Dr. Doom with Dr. Droom. Hence, at a later date, Dr. Droom was renamed Dr. Druid. Retitled Amazing Adult Fantasy as of its 7th issue, the comic then featured stories, as the title would suggest, of fantasy and science fiction, mostly with twist endings. The story of Spider-Man begins when Adult was dropped from Amazing Fantasy's title, as of its 15th and final issue. Writer-editor Stan Lee, and artist and future Randian objectivist Steve Ditko had nothing to lose in creating a teen superhero who was nobody's sidekick, as teenagers of the time were all relegated to sidekick level. Spidey broke the mold, and Amazing Fantasy number 15 sold in record quantities. So it was somewhat baffling that after the success of Amazing Fantasy number 15, it would take a full seven months before Spider-Man would receive his own title. Nevertheless, the Amazing Spider-Man remained our hero's flagship title, and the only Spider game in town for 13 years, until our hero received his second title, The Spectacular Spider-Man, in 1976. In universe, the tale of Peter Parker begins with his parents, CIA operatives Richard and Mary. They met and fell in love over the course of their own careers, eloped one fine day, and were married. It was only after a mission to rescue the man who would come to be known as Wolverine that Mary announced her pregnancy. Sadly, their story comes to a messy end, as they were apparently assassinated after their cover was blown on a mission to investigate one Albert Malik, who at the time had taken the identity of the Red Skull. So it was then that Ben, Richard's elder brother, and May, Ben's wife raised the child, Peter. Years later, during a science experiment gone wrong, Peter is bitten by a radioactive spider, giving him the abilities of super strength and hair-like protrusions on his fingers, allowing him to stick to walls. Through his own science aptitude, the comic Spidey builds mechanical web shooters. It's a much later story where he gains biological webbing abilities. As in the movie, so in the comic. Spidey takes up wrestling, lets a minor crook pass by him, said minor crook murders Uncle Ben, Peter learns the great power, great responsibility lesson. But being Spider-Man is a costly business. Luckily, newspaper magnate J. Jonah Jameson needs pictures. Pictures of Spider-Man. And so, Peter supplies the pictures and earns somewhat of a living. And this basic situation would remain pretty much the same in the decades that followed. But where there are heroes, there are the villains that oppose them. And there are few more infamous in all of Spidey's rogues gallery than Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Norman Osborn, industrialist, discovered a formula for strength enhancement in the notes of a former business partner. Unfortunately, Harry... Norman's son tampered with it to spite him, and the formula becomes unstable, and explodes. Norman is hospitalised, but recovers. Unfortunately, a rather nasty side effect of the formula does a number on his brain chemistry, and voila, Green Goblin. The Green Goblin earns his infamy on the night Gwen Stacy died. In the comics, it was she, not MJ, that took a tumble from a bridge. And rather than being caught in mid-air and lowered to safety, poor Gwen's neck was snapped by Whiplash as Spidey attempted to save her. Of course, it was only the next issue that the Green Goblin met his own grisly end, 
impaled upon his own glider. Except he was later retconned to have survived that encounter, which gave the character a whole new lease of life, even outside the Spider-Man franchise. Of course, there is a half century of Spider-Man, and this is only a shorty. Join me next time as we delve further into Spider-Man's villains, some notable stories from his history, and even take a look at his legacy. See you there!